Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Before today's podcast starts, I just wanted to tell you that Donna is on the show and I decided to make this a two-parter. She had so much information about how to declutter, how to clean, how to organize. She has a book but I think she told me almost everything that was in the book, like no gatekeeping here. So I'm so excited for you to hear the episode. And I decided I'm going to do it in two parts. So um, stay tuned. I'll play one episode about 30 minutes long. And then the other half will be at the end of the week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Donna. Hello, Donna. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for being here. Um, Donna is a recovering perfectionist, and she also helps people with clutter. So have you always been a perfectionist and a neat freak and all of that good stuff? <laughs> well, you know, I when I was young, being organized was the only way I could actually control my environment. We lived in a really small house. I have a twin sister named Dawn, um, oh. who I uh, who I um, shared a room with. And at one point, there were two other teenagers when we were teenagers, two other teenage girls in the house and a great grandmother and a mom and a dad. And, you know, it was a 1400 square foot house. Oh, so, wow. So How many little- bathrooms? Uh, one full and one half. Oh my yeah. gosh. We had to wait for my dad to leave for work in the morning before we could take showers. Cause it wasn't the big bathroom just had a tub that didn't have a shower. So yeah, we had to be very organized about that. But anyway, so one of the things that I found out is the only place I had sp- my own space is if I locked myself in the bathroom. And when I locked myself in the bathroom to like be angry, be mad, whatever was going on, be frustrated, scream, cry, um, I would organize under the sink in the bathroom and that would make me feel better. And then I used to get up really early in the morning. Sometimes um, when I get particularly frustrated with the state of our kitchen and I would rearrange the whole kitchen and um, People were not happy with that. Um, <laughs> the name of my company is actually called Neatly Arranged. My twin calls it Nearly Deranged. <laughs> but, uh, because, I, you know, it's interesting because you'd think that twins would be similar, right? But she's the one who gets overwhelmed easily, freezes, doesn't um, know what to do, is just frozen when when something comes up in terms of a a mess, a pile of stuff, um, go clean your room and, you know, that kind of thing. It's just overwhelming for her. For me, it was not. And so I kind of took over because I couldn't go out to play until my room was clean. And so I'm like, Saturday mornings, I've got to to clean my room so I can go out. And I found that if my friend came over early waiting for me to be able to go out and just sat there while I did things, it was a whole lot easier. Um, and it was entertaining and I got my work done, done and we watched American Bandstand while I was cleaning my room and, you know, then we could go out. So, um, that's that, so funny. That, so that's what started things. And then I just always organized for my friends and my family a lot of times because it was necessary for me to feel comfortable in a space. That was early on. I realized also early on, especially when I went to my sister's house as adults and she was not happy that I just took over and started cleaning everything up rearranging things organizing I think she secretly liked that I was doing it but um because it was done but then she felt bad because it's like it's making her look like she can't do it you know what I mean right and I I think that's a lot of times with my clients as a professional organizer people feel terrible that their houses look the way they do because they feel like you know they're they're on top of their game everywhere else professionally. Um, they could be a star and all this stuff. And then at home, it's just, you know, overwhelm and makes them anxious and makes them depressed. There's actually a scientific link um, that I can talk about in a second about that. But um, but then they're still too embarrassed or uh, ashamed to ask for help. And it's like this vicious circle because mm-hmm. there's something called the clutter feedback loop. Okay. 
you know, a feedback loop is something that feeds on itself and it just keeps going. Okay, so when you're depressed, your house shows it, right? You don't have the energy um, or the inclination or whatever to go clean up anything. You know, you, we've all seen the movies where people are depressed on the couch after a breakup or whatever, right. they lost a job, they're sad, they're crying, the tissues are everywhere, you know, the dirty, the, the dirty dishes and the empty ice cream containers. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. you're surrounded by stuff, and you don't have the um, ability to get up off the couch. And so then seeing your house like that makes you even more depressed, right? And yeah. it just keeps going. So I learned how to get people to get from where they were when they don't feel like it well and then i'm like okay well how do you feel and then let's start from how you feel and use that to actually declutter clean up tidy get rid of things organize make things better because your environment actually does influence your feelings there's studies been done that in a room full of clutter when you're in a clutter, visually cluttered environment you eat more crazy. You actually wow. eat more if you're in a visually cluttered environment. Um, and you, so, you know, having your kitchen and your dining room table be covered with everything, because that's what everybody has, a dining room table covered with everything. Um, that actually is bad for your mental health as well as your physical health, right? But also, it um, visual clutter stimulates the cortisol straight stress hormone. And when your body is flooded with cortisol, it um, has that that freeze. What is it? Flight, fight, flight, or freeze is the um, is the response. You've all heard that, right? Mm -hmm. So when we say I'm going to tackle my bedroom today, right, or tackle my closet, that's like fighting words, right? You're ready mm -hmm. to fight, okay? Right. Um, but it's overwhelming, and then you just close the door and you go take a nap, and that's called flight, right? Or you're ready to do it. And you go there and you look at the first thing and you can't make a decision and you just freeze. And it's all because of science. It's not because you're a terrible person. It's not because you've got some character defect, you know, it's just, that's what happens when you're flooded with uh, the stress hormones, you can't make decisions. You just can't. Is it and, a disorder? Um, to what, for... Well, like I know the extreme is like hoarding, you know, but oh, is it well, okay. a disorder to just let your life get to that point where you um, don't know what to do? Not necessarily. I mean, here's the thing. Anxiety is a disorder, right? Depression is a disorder. Right. There are other things like ADHD, which makes it so that you don't have executive function skills, mm -hmm. right? And so ADHD is a disorder. Autism is considered a disorder. But if you ask my autistic kid, it's a difference, not a disability. Um, I love but that. Uh, th there's, a whole, um, there's a whole movement towards that, you know, uh, uh, now. But, um, but yeah, then there's OCD which is a real disorder. People always say, oh, I'm OCD because you like things neat or something. That's not OCD. That could be a symptom of your OCD. Not that you like things neat, but that you can't function and unless they're neat, all lined up in a row a certain way, you know, and anything out of that ordinary, you know, freaks you out. My, mm -hmm. kid, also, my kid also has anxiety with OCD features, so I can attest to that but and hoarding used to be and may, some people still consider it a subset of OCD like it's a it's a sub diagnosis of OCD so hoarding is a real actual thing that most people when they say I'm a hoarder they're really not because if you're a hoarder you can't function in life I mean you just can't you can't move from room to room mm -hmm. um, you can't part with anything which makes it difficult to, um, you know, to go anywhere, take a job, you know, do any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just not mentally well enough to function in some point. Most people, you know, have cluttered houses, but they don't have um, hoarding disorder. That's, you know, but I tell people, I said, uh, you're not a disorder. I said, you're not a hoarder, 
but you may be neurodivergent because a lot of people who just don't have the organizing skills um, are neurodivergent, meaning ADHD or autistic or something like that. Um, and they just don't have those skills. But here's the thing, you can learn those skills. So just like if you are not Picasso, you're not Matisse, you're not Mozart, you're not Beethoven, right? You don't have artistic talent. You don't have musical talent, okay? Are you gonna feel bad and terrible and ashamed because you can't do, uh, you can't play the piano like them or at all? Right, no, no, you don't feel bad. It's just a talent you don't have. So you can develop it. You can go to classes. You can get better at it from where you are now. But, um, uh, but it's something you're gonna have to work on. Okay, so... Organizing is one of those executive function skills that some people have, and I've got it somehow, and some people don't. And some people have various degrees, you know. Um, but definitely, if uh, if you're neurodivergent, one of the hallmarks of that is that you just don't have it. Planning, prioritizing, organizing, um, meeting deadlines, time management, all that stuff, those are all executive function skills. And Lots of people don't have it. And those are the houses that you can tell are people who are neurodivergent. But it doesn't mean they're hopeless. And you can come up with um, systems and get better at doing things um, so that you can live a life that you are functional in. You know, my most creative people that I've ever met, for some reason, are ADHD. And um, I worked for an interior designer once who did absolutely beautiful work. She could not get out of her house to, in time to get anywhere because she was pulling things from everywhere. She couldn't find anything. You know, her mind was going mm -hmm. you know, a million miles a minute. And um, and so as her assistant, um, I was, you know, the the one who pulled her down to earth. <laughs> I keep doing this like a balloon. It's like, come down. Come down. And because um, I have balloons here, so I'm looking at my balloons um, and pulled her down to earth and grounded her and um, made systems that actually worked. So as a professional organizer, um, there's not one way fits all, but I offer people a lot of tools so that something will maybe work for them mm -hmm. and uh, when you figure out how your mind works, how you operate, what you could use. Like I start telling people, um, use your phone, you know, to make reminders and, and things like that. Uh, and then I realize some people, when they pick up their phone, can't help but look at every ding and, and red but you know, red, red uh, notification and everything that ever flashed on their screen while they were, right? And it's like, okay, then you're not the person to keep your phone there. You're the person that needs paper and pen. OK, um, and maybe you need to keep that pen around your neck because you're going to put it down somewhere. You're not going to have it. All those ideas then that you're having while you're decluttering or organizing is going to derail you from doing the job at hand because you have nowhere to put these swirling ideas. Yeah. So you need, so you need to write them down. That that was <laughs> me as a child. Well, still that that is me um, mm -hmm. where. My mom would say, you can't go anywhere until you clean your room. And I would go into my room and I, it was messy, but it wasn't that it was so messy. It's just that I would do something and get sidetracked. And so then I would focus on that for a second and not get anything done. And then I'd go over here and get sidetracked. And I would just, there was never any closure. I could never. And then it was just overwhelm, right. just like. I'll just shove it all under my bed or all in a closet <laughs> and shut the door because right. I don't know where to start and I can't stay on task. That's right. me. And so many other people. And that's my sister. Um, but what, what I found out is that if you break it down into steps, for example, both my kids are ADHD, the artistic one, the younger one, who's a tech whiz um, and brilliant in many, many ways. Um, can't even do their room if I'm in there with them doing it. That's just their um, their thing. But my younger, I mean, but my older kid, my daughter, who's 22 now, I taught how to clean uh, her room years ago by giving her steps. I actually taught her how to clean the bathroom. I taught her how to do all these things that would make her a good roommate because I don't care what you're like when you're by yourself. But until you're, you know, 30 something, you're probably going to have a roommate. And then maybe you'll have a, you know, uh, 
a life partner and they'll be a permanent roommate and you got to be a good roommate. So when I said, your job is to clean the bathroom, here's the list and here's all the steps that it takes to clean the bathroom. And mm -hmm. I wrote it all down for her. Um, so she had a checklist. And that's kind of what you have to do with people um, who can't take directions at, you know, five steps at a time. You know, they just, and you can't give them something vague and huge and sounds overwhelming. You break it down. You know, it's like, okay, first you're going to wipe down the toilet seat and then you're going to, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever and then do the whole thing and this is what makes a clean bathroom so in my book which I'm now going to just talk about because do it. A, lot yes. say, a lot of what I say is in there this mess is making me stress I love it how to, how to organize your home and find peace um in it one of the chapters is called go to your room and it's a 12-step program of how to actually <laughs> clean your room um because, I love it, that. because it's overwhelming and every mom has to teach their kids or they're never going to know. You can't just tell a kid, go clean your room. How, how do they know your standards? How do they know what to do first? I mean, as an adult, it's overwhelming. So you think a kid's going to know? Yeah. So if so, my goal in life is to help people feel better about themselves by giving them the tools that they need. And sitting with them to do it, so to make sure that they learn it. In another life, I was a teacher. Um, I mean, this life, but <laughs> years before, be, before I had kids, which made it impossible to to like other people's kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's outing myself. No, it's really funny. hard uh, when you have your own kids and to feel um, loving towards other people's kids because then everything that kids do make you angry. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I was a computer teacher and I was a Hebrew school teacher. And um, and so everything I do is breaking things down into parts that make it fun, first of all, um, and then not overwhelming and things that will actually meet you where you are and certainly not um, judgmental or scolding or any of that kind of stuff. You know, my kids think I mean, but that's pretty much the only people who do. <laughs> Well, I, I agree with you that there is like a shame factor. People are ashamed, like the people that maybe get their house cleaned and then they clean it before the house cleaner gets there, right. you know, like. You kind of have to actually, because <laughs> no, I'm telling you, there's, there's one, there's a difference between cleaning and decluttering and organizing. And okay. three, there's three parts. And I talk about that too, because a lot of people, you know, only do one or the two or and never the three. And now I can't say that my house is clean, but it's organized, but it's also not always tidy. Okay. So that, that, that sounds like a contradiction. See, so when people think of organized and you think of HGTV and the beautiful reveal, you know, mm -hmm. and all the, all the pretty things and everything that's in the place, that's not life. That's right. called staged, yeah. staged for TV, staged for an open house, you know, staged for pictures. You know, when you're living in a, in a space, Things aren't always put away. You're using them, mm -hmm. you know, or you were using them. You get up to answer the door. Now it's, you know, three o'clock. You got to go pick up the kids from carpool, blah, 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 and all this stuff. But if you're organized, then when it's time to clean up, when company's coming, which, by the way, if you want to be motivated to clean your house, <laughs> invite people over. <laughs> um, right? So, so true. So when company's coming... And you have a few hours, you know, to get things done and not just shoved into closets, but actually if you have a place for everything and you don't have too much stuff, because most people have so much stuff that there's not a place for anything because every square inch is crammed and you can't put things back. And if it doesn't make it easy to put things back, if, if wherever you're storing something, it isn't easy to take out and it isn't easy to put it back. It's not going to get put back. It's going to stay out. And that's just the way it is. People only do what's easy. And if they can't, they don't. For example, I'm four foot 11. I'm tiny. And um, well, tiny in height. Not tiny. <laughs> I'm five yeah, one. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> okay. Vertically so challenged. Every, right. So everything is a step ladder, right? I mean, I, there's only mm -hmm. so many cabinets and things at, at my level and I have to get on a step ladder. Now my laundry room is beautifully 
organized, not that it's pretty with, you know, uh, Pinterest worthy chalkboard yeah. labels and all, you know, all that stuff. I always say form follows function and pretty comes later. If you have time, my things are labeled, not necessarily with a label maker. I mean, I do have one, but you know, mm -hmm. blue masking tape, you know, the blue painter's tape yeah. and a Sharpie <laughs> done. My yeah. thing is done is better than perfect. And I don't have time usually to go make pretty labels. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's easier to just have it done so you can see. And so everybody else can see, because that's the important thing. If you don't label anything, it doesn't matter if you know, nobody else does. And then they're not going to put it away. So very good point. So you've got to label things and give people a tour so they know what to do and where to think uh, to put things. But anyway, my laundry room is very, very organized. But the shelves are all above the washer and dryer, you know, and yeah. so. I can only reach the bottom and not even very well at that. And everything else, I have to pull out the stepladder and in my kitchen too. And I can't always be bothered to pull out the stepladder. So I get things close to where they're supposed to go. And then when I have like critical mass and I really do have to get it up there and I have time, then I go put things away. Um, but me telling you all this is because um, if you make it easy to put things away, people will put things away. If they okay. know where it goes and it's easy to reach and it's easy to open and you don't have to worry about everything falling out of the closet, like Captain Kangaroo. I don't know. Do you know? Captain <laughs> yeah, Kangaroo? I remember that show. <laughs> you can only use these references with people around your own because <laughs> they don't know. But for people who don't know, Captain Kangaroo was a kid's TV show and there was a closet um, where uh, uh, they kept the carrots for where Mr. Green Jeans kept the carrots for the bunny rabbit and he, uh, or something like that. I don't yeah. know. Anyway, all these carrots were in the closet and you open it up and they all come out at you like a, a avalanche. So <laughs> most people have closets like that. It's like pull something out, shove it in, close the door real fast. Right. right. Um, but that's why people don't put things away. And why is there no room in that cabinet? Because stuff is in the back that you've never used you don't like, you bought something else that you like better and you didn't take that one out and you just put the new one in and now there's no room because your rooms or your cabinets are, are uh, filled with, you know, junk because you're always going to use your favorites. Yeah. Knowing that people always use the favorites of anything means that the same two, three, four things of a, of a kind are the things that are going to get used. You always use your favorite towels. All the other ones might as well not be there because you're not using them. Your favorite coffee mugs, your favorite dishes, your favorite silverware. You know what I mean? Everybody's got their favorites, favorite mm -hmm. clothes. And so people have backups and then they have backups to their backups. And then they got things that aren't even functional anymore, which is why they bought a new one, but they never took it out like pots. You know, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. you see these great pots at Costco. You want a nice new matching set. Wonderful. Wonderful. You bring them home, but you never bother to take out the old scratch Teflon, right. missing lids, whatever else you've got. <laughs> and now your pot drawer is stuck and you've got pretty pots, but you can't put them away because there's no room. So when we talk about decluttering, a lot of times we're just looking for the wrong stuff. Okay, It's not like you have too much stuff. You have the wrong stuff. The wrong stuff is things that don't work, don't like, obsolete, duplicates, triplicates. I always tell people you find a duplicate because you couldn't remember where you put the first one. And then you buy the the third one because you didn't remember that you had the first two. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yes, like, that's what I do happens. know what you mean. <laughs> and people just keep going to the store and, and buying instead of just looking at what you've got. So I don't know, we're off track, but with, no, with this is all very valuable information. It is. And I have a question. Okay. What about the rainy day items? The items that right. either, well, you know, I use those or I might use that. I might use this. This could be used for something, blah, 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 and all that stuff. Right. Okay. So a lot of times what people have are old dreams in their house and garages and attics and basements and things like that are filled with what I call old dreams, crafts rooms, craft rooms, mm -hmm. you know? are filled with old dreams, um, kids' bedrooms, old dreams. And what I mean by that is you had this idea 
of wouldn't it be nice that I could sit and make scrapbooks of all my kids' stuff, and I'd be that girl who sits there and makes scrapbooks, and I keep all this stuff, and it never happens. Right. Or I remember how nice it was when my grandma made me um, uh, an afghan or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, knitting or mm -hmm. crocheted or whatever. I learned how to crochet when I was in seventh grade in home economics. Okay, well, I'm dating myself because that's what happened you know, <laughs> in the seventies. But anyways, that's what happened. Um, but, uh, and then you have this idea that you're going to do that for your grandkids. And then you realize at, you know, 50 something years old that your kids are 40 something and they're not having kids. They can't have kids. You're not going to have grandkids and all these things that you thought you were keeping around for the grandkids aren't happening. It's not a life that, that is your actual reality. Or you kept this because you thought you'd want to do this, but now you'd rather be out, you know, um, spray dancing or no, my parents just <laughs> spray dancing. I just made that up. But you'd rather be out doing something else because you found right. a new hobby than the old hobby. And if you really wanted to do that old hobby, you'd be doing it. But you found something else that you prefer to do with your time. Yeah. So all these things that, that you thought that you might keep because you were going to do it. It's an old dream. It doesn't fit your life right now. It may be that it doesn't fit your life yet, in which case start using it now. Like I tell people, take the plastic off the couch, which only people my age would understand. <laughs> but I work a lot with the seniors, you know, so it's like people kept things for company, right? You keep yes. Your plastic yes. On the couch, so it's nice. For even company, China. Though. Even and China. China, right? Yeah. People have cabinets full of their wedding china which they've never used because nobody entertains like that and if you're going to have 12 people over you want to use paper plates now for holidays <laughs> or whatever because who wants to wash 12 plates it's so and, true and everything and so all of this china that got passed down and that you've accumulated and i have china from my first wedding from my second wedding and I actually use it, but it's one week a year and it's for Passover right? because um, you need different dishes. Yeah. But everybody else has it sitting in their cabinets. So now's the time to use it. You know, it's like, and why should company deserve anything nicer than what you give to yourself? Right. Self-care. You deserve it. Use it or, you, or lose it. And think about what you're taking in like every birthday or new year's or whatever is a good time to think about what am I bringing into this new year with me? And you think about not what you're letting go of, but you're thinking about what you're bringing with you. If you think about what you're bringing with you, even if you're packing to move, say, if you think about not letting go of stuff, but what am I bringing into my new life? And then you pack like you're going on vacation. It's like in my new life, I want a set of pretty silverware. You know, I only need maybe eight pieces because even if my kids come home with a spouse, uh, that's as many as we're ever going to need, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have an eight piece, piece setting of something. And then um, I, I want, you know, these pillows because they're pretty and the this picture because I like it and not because I inherited it or, you know, whatever. You think about what you're bringing into your new life, whether it starts today or moving to a new house or whatever it is, um, then it makes it easier to look at things in that frame of mind and say, oh, I don't need this. That doesn't serve my new life. I, I don't love need that. to bring that with me. And so that's my kind of my new mantra. That's the new way I've been trying to help people thinking about. Because when you're moving, for example, a lot of people are doing, my next book is about moving. So I'm thinking a lot about people decluttering before moving. That's a great idea. When, when I tell people you need to declutter before you move and organize, because when it's, or, and not just throw things in a box, when it's organized, then it makes it so much easier when you get to the other side mm -hmm. and you just pull it out of one box. You don't have to go searching for things. My kitchen is here. My kitchen uh, baking stuff is in this box. It's not everywhere. The mm -hmm. pots, the um, the pans, the utensils, the rolling pins, the um, um, the sprinkles, you know, the flowers, yeah. the all that stuff. I keep that all together in a baking cabinet because... That's why bother taking it from everywhere else when you only need it when you're baking. You right. keep what you need for baking all together. So 
But in general, if you're not going to be doing baking anymore, you know, if that ship is sailed and you're done, then you don't need all those things. So you want to declutter and organize before you move. But um, when you're moving, um, even if you're not moving, you want to only bring those things with you that you know are going to fit in the house that you have. Mm -hmm. right? And you don't want to pay for extra things uh, for for paying extra for things bringing over because every pound counts on a truck or oh, every yeah. minute counts when you're paying movers. Um, and, you know, you have to unpack all this stuff and you don't want stuff sitting in the garage because I'll tell you, if you've moved into a house, there's stuff sitting in your garage that you never unpacked from the last one. And if you only move that one over um, again, it's like, why? Yeah, I have, it's valuable real estate. So, um, so you do want to, Un, uh, to declutter and pack. And we were talking about the difference between decluttering, organizing, and cleaning. You want to declutter first, then you organize. And all of this is in my book in terms of the steps of mm -hmm. how you actually physically do it. I like lay it all out, very simple steps so you don't get overwhelmed. Um, but then you have space to clean. I'll tell you, people with housekeepers hate me. The, the <laughs> housekeepers hate me. Because all of a sudden, I now help these people organize their stuff and the piles are gone. And now there's all this room and now they can't just avoid it. Right. Got to, I learned years ago, I had a housekeeper. I don't now, which is why my house is, and I'm busy working. So now right. my house is not as clean as it could be, <laughs> um, except for, you know, like once a week. But um, I was told that they don't touch anything if there's more than 12 things on a surface. Might have been just that that service might be universal. Right. But if you want people to actually clean, there has to be room, space to clean. Mm -hmm. And you don't want them just, uh, that's what we're talking about is uh, cleaning for the housekeeper. And you don't want them just shoving things into drawers randomly because they need a clean surface, which is why I find at people's house, I'm like, why is this here? Oh, I don't know. My maid must have just stuck it here. You know, people don't even know what they have. They're just randomly shoved into drawers because you need it nice when people come over or when you're cleaning or whatever. So the less you have, the idea for cluttering is the less you have, the less you have to clean. And the more space you have, and the more space you have, the less visual clutter, you feel a certain way. And, and obviously less stressful. And I told you about those studies. Um, you feel less stressed. You feel open. You feel like there's room uh, to breathe, literally room to breathe. Mm -hmm. There's energy. And people talk about like the Chinese energy. It's called chi, right? Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. Their name for it. And feng shui is all about letting the energy flow. Right. I mean, it's true. And I'm not a feng shui expert by any chance, but I try to employ principles where I can. Yeah. But you can actually, but I came upon it even, even before I ever knew anything about feng shui. You just know that the air feels different when you're in an uncluttered environment and you can relax because you don't feel like, oh, I should really take care of that. Oh, I needed to do that. Oh, you know, this is sitting on me heavy and I can't go out and play basically until I take care of this. I just, I just had that happen to me. I've had this, this thing that I had to do this um, uh, insurance claim that I had to get done from when I broke my wrist this summer. Mm -hmm. And it was so traumatic to like go back through all of that and relive this, this injury and all the emotions that came up with it, that it just took me until, I don't know, last week to finally get this thing in. But I felt like I couldn't get back to doing things that I needed to do that I wanted to do creative pursuits because I still had that hanging over my head. Yeah. Now I don't want anybody to feel guilty or ashamed or bad or mad or frustrated whenever they look at something. Okay. That to me, if something in their home that they're looking at is going to bring up a negative emotion, that's also the wrong stuff. That's the first stuff that you want to get out of there. Because nobody wants to feel bad. There's no point to it. And no. so if you're um, starting to declutter, and here's where people go wrong. 
Okay, guys, that's the end of today's first half with Donna talking about clutter and cleaning and getting organized. Believe me, there is more to come. She has more information. I'm not just saying that. So tune in for the other half of Conversations with Donna on Friday. Thanks, guys. Bye.